Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back to our session from the desk of uh, law. So today we have Gopi Sarvatas who will be speaking about uh, CA along with certain insights about uh, uh, Citizenship Act and others. Advocate Gopi Karunakaran sir is an advocate practicing in the High Court of Karnataka. He is an economics and law graduate from the University of Bombay. He has published papers on law and economics. He is currently writing a book on proportional representation and Indian option. Yeah, of course. Uh, I would like to thank you for giving me this opportunity to talk to you and to your viewers. Uh, I would like to uh, look at the current controversy on the Citizen Amendment Act Hi. 2019. So uh, before I get into this, I thought, you know, mm -hmm. we should give the your viewers an overview of what is this thing about, you know. Exactly. And, and not just the short thing about the CAA 2019, which people are talking about. So I thought, you know, maybe I should start with uh, telling your viewers, uh, what is this uh, Citizenship Act? Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at the uh, Constitution of India, mm -hmm. uh, the citizenship, who is a citizen is not being defined in the uh, Constitution of India, in the mm -hmm. Indian Constitution. The Constitution only says who is a citizen of India. Okay. If, okay. There is no definition of a citizen, right? Mm -hmm. and also, uh, from uh, part two of our Constitution, from articles five to eleven, says uh, what is uh, who is a citizen of India. Mm -hmm. Now, if I move, you know, uh, article five, six, and seven of part two of our constitution mm -hmm. i just read out what uh, part two uh, article five says sure sure sir yeah so that your guys uh, the people listening to you would the citizenship at the commencement of the constitution mm -hmm. now uh, we have to look at the historic content a uh, context in which these things were framed the constitution was framed when the partition of India was going on, you know, mm -hmm. uh, we started the Constituent Assembly was formed, and uh, you know, um, uh, it was sitting in Delhi, mm -hmm. and uh, at the same time we had the partition of India. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of movement of people from India to Pakistan and from Pakistan to India, mostly Hindus, and those who left India were Muslims. Mm -hmm. So it was at that time that this thing was thought about. Uh, I'll read Article 5. Uh, Article 5 uh, says citizenship at the commencement of the Constitution. Okay. At the commencement of the Constitution, every person who has his domicile in the territory of India mm -hmm. and A, who was born in the territory of India or B, either of whose parents were born in the territory of India or those who has been ordinary, ordinarily resident in the territory of India for not mm -hmm. less than five years immediately preceding such commencement shall be the citizen of India. Yeah. Right. Okay. So these are the things in which we started out. Mm -hmm. now, uh, Article 6 it talks about the rights of citizenship of certain persons who have migrated to India from Pakistan. Okay. These uh, people who left Pakistan, mostly mm -hmm. Hindus, who mm -hmm. came to India, it says, notwithstanding anything in Article 5, a person who has migrated to the territory of India from the territory now included in Pakistan shall be deemed to be citizen of India at the commencement of the constitution. Mm -hmm. Then it is, you know, three or four, uh, three uh, 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 subsections. Then the rights of citizens of certain migrants to Pakistan. Okay. Standing anything contained in Article 5, this is I'm talking about Article 7. Okay. 6. A person who has, after the first day of March 1947, migrated from the territory of India mm -hmm. to the territory now included in Pakistan, shall mm -hmm. not be deemed to be a citizen of India. Mm -hmm. Provided that nothing in this article shall supply apply to a person who after having so migrated to the mm -hmm. territory mm -hmm. 
now included in Pakistan, has returned to the territory of India under mm -hmm. a permit for resettlement of permanent return. There were people, mm -hmm. mainly Muslims, who went to Pakistan okay. you know, based on uh, from, what, India. Uh, uh, from India and mm -hmm. they were dissatisfied with what happening there they didn't like it you know generally people don't like to leave your hometown go to a foreign place and then you know, they got dejected they came back so it was said here that who have migrated after the 19th day of july 1948 mm -hmm. okay. so there were people who came back but then you had to have uh, a permit for resettlement in india mm -hmm. and people did but not a lot, you know, maybe 20,000 families or uh, below that. I, I have no idea about the. Now, these were the, the main things in the article, uh, I mean, chapter two. Mm. But chapter two did not decide on anything and it gave the power to parliament to do it. Do it. Okay. Okay. So it was under this, uh, uh, under article 11. Mm which mm -hmm. says parliament to regulate the rights of citizenship mm -hmm. by law. that is why the citizenship act came okay. into being in mm -hmm. 1955 mm -hmm. and those acts have been you know uh, amended sub, uh, subsequently mm -hmm. and there were three major amendments that took place mm -hmm. now uh, uh why in uh, article 7 they have said that you know you should have a permit for resettlement or a permanent return issued under the authority of any law is because you know people who had left india mm -hmm. and gone to pakistan mm -hmm. their property were acquired by the indian government and okay. given to people who had come from Pakistan into India. Okay. Mm -hmm. so they had an occupation of that. And now these people who are returning, mm -hmm. uh, you know, would want to have their properties back. So that mm -hmm. caused a dilemma to the uh, people. So mm -hmm. there was a necessity because a lot of uh, uh, constituent assembly members mm -hmm. at that time said that this is going to create a lot of havoc. Mm -hmm. Already there is so much. Uh, uh, you know, violence and murder and other things mm -hmm. happening in North India. So they thought that, you know, might as well restrict them to come into it. This was mm -hmm. in respect of uh, the western part of India. Okay. Pan you know, Punjab, Punjab, India. India. Mm -hmm. yeah. But this was not uh, implemented on the eastern mm -hmm. side of India. Where okay. East Pakistan was there, there was uh, West Bengal and East Pakistan, mm -hmm. and there was a lot of migration going on, still going on. But this mm -hmm. somehow the other was not uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, implemented on the other side. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so uh, now uh, the CAA uh, has um, uh, you know the Citizenship Act has been amended several times. Okay. Uh, three important things are to be noted. Mm. Is that in uh, uh, in the late or mid uh, 1980s, mm -hmm. there was something called the Assam agitation. Okay. Right, and uh, there were uh, groups. Okay, it all started. There was an election uh, to be held uh, by election to the okay. uh, mm -hmm. parliament. Mm -hmm. uh, in 1979, okay, MP had died. Okay, a by-election was to be held. Mm -hmm. Now, a new electoral roll was prepared. Okay, for that mm -hmm. particular election, mm -hmm. and the locals and the people there in Assam mm -hmm. found mm -hmm. out that you know the electoral rolls have you know. Uh, Increased substantially. There were a lot of people in that voting list, yes, so sir. they were a bit uh, suspicious about the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then, uh, it was found that you know a lot of illegal immigrants okay. got their name into the uh, electoral mm -hmm. rules, and mm -hmm. uh, you know they were voting. So mm -hmm. that started 
started an agitation. It started okay. with the students' union, uh, okay. the Assam, uh, um, uh, all Assam students' union, uh -huh. uh, uh, which started in the 80s. Uh, sorry, uh, it started uh, with the Assam uh, students' union, and uh, there were two leaders, you know, uh, uh, Pukhan and Sorry, you know, I don't know. Okay. Uh, uh, Pukan and the, I, for, I forget the name of the other person. Both, yeah. uh, you know, the, the first person became the chief minister of Assam later on. And okay. that was the Assam Ganasangram position. Mm -hmm. uh, the first was the students' union. The second mm -hmm. was the people's uh, 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 group. And oh, cool. uh, they agitated. And at that mm -hmm. time, uh, the Prime Minister of India, Mr. Mm -hmm. Rajiv uh, uh, Gandhi, okay. uh, conversations with the students and the Assam Ganasangra mm -hmm. and they entered into an agreement whereby you know they amended the Citizenship Act. Okay. Uh, where there was, I'll just read out to you what are the contents of that, so mm -hmm. that. Uh, uh, uh this amendment uh, uh, has taken place and it has uh, come as 6 uh, a special provision uh, with respect to uh, the assam accord it is called the assam oh. accord and uh, it says 6 a uh, 2 uh, says subject to the provisions of section 6 and 7 uh, persons of indian origin who came before the first day of January 1966 to Assam from the specified territories, including those whose names were including, included in the electoral laws used for the purpose of the general election to the House of the People held in 1967, and those who have been ordinarily resident before their entry on the first day of January. So those people who had entered India before 1st January uh, 1996 would be citizens. The rest of the people who came to Assam between 1st of January 1966 and the 25th day of March 1971 um, uh, would not be uh, uh, would not be allowed to vote. Uh, but after 10 years, they would become citizens of India, right? So that amendment uh, uh, took place in uh, 1986. Mm -hmm. um, so, which said that those people who entered uh, Assam mm -hmm. uh, uh, before the first day of uh, January 1966 would get, uh, mm -hmm. um, you know, citizenship. There were some other uh, uh, okay. uh, mm -hmm. and those who had come between first uh, of January 1966 and mm -hmm. 25th of March 1971. Mm -hmm. uh, from the specified territory, which is, you know, mm -hmm. uh, Bangladesh or uh, um, East Pakistan. Okay. Um, um, such a person uh, has been detected and you know, for 10 years, you know, he would mm -hmm. have all the rights of a citizen, but would not okay. be able to vote in Fourth. the election. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So that was the first major uh, uh, amendment that took place. The second amendment uh, of mm -hmm. importance was, you know, the o OCI, Overseas Citizens of India. Awesome. Yes. Uh, huh. So, mm -hmm. um, uh, so that was uh, we need not get into it uh, because uh, that was a major thing where you know people of uh, Indian origin and there are certain uh, qualifications who can be mm -hmm. called an OCI and all that. Yes, yeah, citizens. Was CIO, uh, people of Indian origin. There were two okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. and OCI. Then that was merged subsequently. Mm -hmm. uh, so that also had a big effect on people, you know, Indians who would need visa to come into India. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, mm -hmm. did not uh, apply for a visa. They have an OCI card. They can come in um, mm -hmm. uh, without any hassles. Uh, the only thing is that they can't hold any political office or stand for elections okay. or vote. Uh -huh. Those are the things. But otherwise, you know, they're all like us normal Indians, you know, mm -hmm. having all the rights. And, um, uh, those, they can open a bank account, they can buy mm -hmm. land, certain land they can't buy, but 
but they can mm -hmm. do everything else. Uh, now the third, uh, uh, the other thing is also uh, there was uh, uh, there was another amendment I think in 2015 or 14 where okay. you know people get designated as migrants. Uh, yeah. You know, there was, yes. Uh, uh, you know that was not there. That is another major uh, thing which has affected. Um, uh, you know, people's uh, this. So yes, I, now they have inserted a new provision for uh, illegal migrants. They migrants, have modified. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So that also, um, you know, it has some uh, thing. Also, I would like mm -hmm. to mention uh, that the Citizenship Act was amended in two thousand four. Uh, okay. Uh, section uh, three uh, by mm -hmm. birth. Earlier, um, uh, there were some uh, different thing. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. 2004, the change was said in Article. Th I mean, uh, Section three, except as provided in Subsection two, every person born in India on or after the 26th day of January 1950, but before the first day of July 1987. So they mm -hmm. have mentioned, you know. If you remember in the uh, Article Five, it said that whosoever was yes. the that has been subsequently changed. So uh, January twenty sixth day of Jan January nineteen fifty is uh, uh, when our constitution came into being. Mm -hmm. uh, so from that day, those things have changed. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, uh, so it has been dynamic, you know. I mean, citizenship uh, thing is not something which is static, depending upon. Mm -hmm. law uh, uh, things, uh, uh, economic, uh, social, and other things, you know. But the thing is, I want to tell you uh, now, uh, when you look at the Citizenship Amendment Act of 2019, we must mm -hmm. notice that there was a lot of pressure when the Constituent Assembly was uh, in sitting. Uh, mm -hmm. Many people decide wanted uh, the citizenship to be based on religion yeah the constituent assembly mm -hmm. being very wise mm -hmm. disagreed with that they said that that is not a, a thing we for, for a secular india so we mm -hmm. can't grant uh, uh, citizenship to people based on religion it may religion. happen you know you know not based on region, religion, caste, all that. Mm -hmm. It may be possible in Europe, where you know, uh, even you in Maldives, yeah. uh, only Muslims can be the citizens, yeah. Or you know, for example, in the US, the blacks mm -hmm. were not considered, though they were living there, they were not considered mm -hmm. as citizens. If you citizens. remember the famous decision of Dred Scott, mm -hmm. uh, where you know, he was not considered a citizen. I mean, the U.S. Supreme mm -hmm. Court, uh, the Constitution said equal. I mean, opportunities mm -hmm. and uh, this. Uh, uh, yeah. So he was considered not to be a citizen. Mm -hmm. Then uh, you, uh, they moved from not being a citizen to equal and separate uh, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. uh, thing. So all this is there. And even in uh, during World War II, there was a case of a Japanese Korematsu who was mm -hmm. uh, uh, who was um, uh, uh, he was of uh, American citizen of Japanese origin, but after okay. Pearl Harbor, uh -huh. when uh, the U.S. went to war with Japan, he was mm -hmm. indoctrinated. Though he was a citizen, and he, mm -hmm. he had offered to fight for America, but still, okay. so, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, all this was at the back of the mind of our Constituent Assembly um, mm -hmm. members, and say they decided that religion won't be a a condition for uh, citizenship of India. Now, coming to uh, Citizenship Amendment Act uh, 2019, uh, yeah. uh, uh, what I would like to mention here is that uh, the 19 amendment says Mm -hmm. There are three or four major points that okay. citizenship would be accorded to people of Hindu, Sikh, Buddhist, Jain, 
Parsi of mm -hmm. Christian religions. Yes. Coming, and the second point is to be noted from Afghanistan, Bangladesh, and Pakistan. Pakistan. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, those and the third point is those who have entered before the 31st day of December 2014. Mm -hmm. Four is that they shall not be treated as an illegal immigrant. Immigrants. Migrant. migrant. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah. So, uh, and the fifth thing is that, you know, their process of being a citizen mm -hmm. is, uh, you know, hastened. From five years to five years, from eleven years for the other people. Other people, yeah. Okay, so it is hasten. Yes. And uh, the sixth thing is that it is not applicable to tribal areas of Assam, Meghalaya, and uh, other uh, areas. Other regions, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, and the reason uh, given mm -hmm. is that you know. Uh, that these people are subject to religious discrimination. And uh, also they are from the minority in that region, in those yeah. countries. Yeah. But, okay, to the extent of Afghanistan and Pakistan, you can say that the minorities are being harassed. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to Bangladesh, it is no more so. See, the, mm -hmm. the problem is in... Uh, uh, the northeast Assam, uh, that mm -hmm. area, you know, mm -hmm. we don't have that much migration coming from the west, you know, except a yes. few uh, people mm -hmm. coming in and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, those people are not coming because of uh, uh, um, what do you call religious discrimination. They are coming for economic reasons. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is, you know, people have been talking about that. You know, we are giving them citizenship uh, because of uh, uh, religious discrimination. Nowhere mm. in the act, in the mm. uh, reasons or, uh, you know, uh, Not reasoning, it's uh, uh, or in the subject matter, uh, is this thing being mentioned? So I don't yes. know how people picked up, you know, saying that, you know, it is this because of discrimination. I don't see uh, that. It, it was told in uh, the assembly debates. So when this was questioned by the opposition party, so this was. Uh, answered solely. This is for that reason that we have not included. We have only included uh, but, these. You know, statement of objectives and reasoning in any amendment it has to be there. It has to be a part of any amendment exactly. or any any enactment. You mm -hmm. have to give the reasons. You know, I mean, just so I don't know whether that will hold ground. You know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, when it comes up before the Supreme Court. And if our uh, the people who are assisting the court are able to um, make some good uh, uh, arguments, I think it should mm -hmm. fall flat. Now, uh, and how about the date that has been taken up, like thirty first December of two thousand fourteen? So absolutely no explanation. Absolutely no explanation. I mean, what is the rationale behind that is not known. Uh, it, yeah, it, and, and also in the citizenship act in various places we can find dates like 26 January 1950. Understandable that that's the Republic Day, so they considered that. And still, 25th, uh, 25th March uh, 1971 also has a has a significance. That was the day okay. when Bangladesh declared independence from uh, okay. Pakistan. Right. Okay. 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 Uh, also, there is a letter. Apparently, this is what I g uh, garnered from the uh, de uh, not the debates, uh, the arguments in the Supreme Court. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, that was a letter which was sent by uh, the interim government of Bangladesh at that time. Bangladesh, mm -hmm. you know, declared independence on 25th uh, March uh, 1971. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. so there is some significance. But mm -hmm. uh, December 31, 2014. Uh, yeah. No connection <laughs> or rational. Uh, yeah. Now, so and, and also there is one more date, first of July, some year. Uh, I think it is for the Bang Bangladesh immigrants. I guess first of uh, July something. I, I forgot. Uh, no, I that is that 1966. Yeah, yeah. 1966 yeah. Or July first. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that. As to what, why that happened, 
uh, so let, I will check up since you asked me. I will I will check up why it happened. Yeah, but actually the burning debate everywhere is like, what is this uh, rationale for government to select a date? Like on what basis they are going to select and why only 2014? Why couldn't it be 15 or 14? Or, or, or 15? My argument would be uh, the other is what if mm -hmm. you know there is a continuous repression going on in these countries yeah right mm -hmm. it is not that you know they have stopped uh, repressing correct uh, yeah uh, oh, mm -hmm. uh, that is one second is you know i you know i don't buy the argument that repression in uh, mm -hmm. uh, bangladesh is happening see sheikh mm -hmm. hasina is a leader who rules mm -hmm. that country with an iron hand and she is very secular she has yeah. put mm -hmm. on all those elements who have you know been creating problems uh, in this area so mm -hmm. she has worked with an iron hand so i don't see any reason and i am surprised mm -hmm. that why sheikh hasina is not upset <laughs> about this you know yes. <laughs> and, and uh, she should have raised it with the government probably she must have raised i don't know but you know mm -hmm. she should have uh, objected to that you know it's a slur it's a uh, you are slurring my country you know saying that you know she has by in hand she has brought down this uh, communal elements there the mm -hmm. jamaat -e islam and all they have been jailed some of them have been hanged to death you know because of this you know their participation mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. horror of uh, 1971 mm -hmm. now um uh see there are this has been repeated and it is available on the uh, media you know about rohingyas and uh, the other mm -hmm. aspect that they have mentioned Tibetans, but they have not my, uh, mentioned China in any of the three countries. You know. Yes. Uh, Buddhists are uh, Buddhists are uh, um, not uh, uh, what do you call uh, discriminated in Southeast Asia, where Asia. it is the majority religion, right? Mm -hmm. right. Only China where Buddhists are being prosecuted, and so the government has not put China in that block of three countries. Countries. True. You know, this itself is something. Okay. Now, the second thing is, you know, in Sri Lanka, mm -hmm. the Tamils are not only Hindus. There are Muslim Tamils also. Yeah. Okay. I think yes. probably the government has not included uh, Tamils of Sri Lanka is because of this reason. I mean, <laughs> yes. Right. You know, to having... Uh, I don't know, you know, maybe what is their thinking. Uh, then there are other Indians, you know, in Fiji or mm -hmm. you know, Suriname, Guyana, or even in Nepal, Nepal for that matter. Like from Nepal, also we have a lot of immigrants, yeah. but nowhere it is mentioned. Yeah, of course, Nepal, you know, it's an open border, so anybody can come and go, you know. So, that's what, uh, uh, so. Uh, you have Ugandans, Indian Ugandans of uh, Indians of uh, you know based in Uganda or Kenya, mm -hmm. Tanzania. What mm -hmm. about them? What about South Africans? Of course, South Africa there is no uh, discrimination there. Mm -hmm. But you know, if you remember in 1970s, you know, Idi Amin threw out hundred thousand uh, Asians. Asians. You know, uh, send them to the UK. So it, if it happens mm -hmm. like that, something happens. So what do we? Do got it. Yeah. See the other... But these are the open questions. If the latest if the amendment had some uh rationale and it had provided something, then we would have answered had answer to all these questions. Yeah. But now everything is on assumptions. Yeah. See, the other thing which is very worrying for me is mm -hmm. that there is a uh, uh, appointment of an empowered committee. Yes. Hmm. Okay. Now uh, you have to make an application to the empowered committee. Then the empowered committee will give it to the district committee mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. to look at that. Uh, mm -hmm. The problem is that if you designate uh, your decision to declare a person an illegal migrant mm -hmm. uh, or something like that, uh, leaving it in the hands of a junior level officer is complicating. You know, he might, you know, uh, require a bribe or, you know, he may not, not like the person's face. He can reject it. Right. And the second thing yeah. is, there is no appellate thing. If you write to the empowered committee, 
-hmm. and the empower committee rejects your uh, uh, rejects your application where do i mm -hmm. go do i go to mm -hmm. the high court do i go to a superior thing that is not there in the act amendment act okay. so uh, there is a problem you know mm -hmm. um uh, uh, this so um these are some of the things which i have noted and uh, uh, to me you know if you are asking me about you know whether it will stand uh, the test of our constitution mm -hmm. uh, i think it is uh, difficult uh, because the doctrine of reasonable classification would come in mm -hmm. you know uh, how are you classifying this uh, the yes. doctrine of uh, uh, reasonable classification is a legal pr uh, principle ensuring fair and just treatment under Article mm -hmm. mm -hmm. for a lawful grouping of individual or entities based on intelligible differentia. We don't okay. find that. Here. We don't find that here. Mm -hmm. Which, with a rational connection to a legislative purpose. Now what okay. is that? I mean, uh, it is very difficult for me to um, find out, you know, where there is a nexus or a rational collection, connection. Mm -hmm. So if uh, it is possible uh, that, you know, the persons who assist the Supreme Court are able okay. to make good uh, arguments based on this, mm -hmm. I think we, uh, those who are against uh, CAA may, may, might succeed. Uh, this is just my this you know i'm not in favor or because you know uh, uh, <laughs> then it is argued uh, the other thing is some people are arguing that article 11 uh, which mm -hmm. is uh, 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 part two says mm -hmm. that you know the um uh, that the parliament has every right to do it do it okay. mm -hmm. uh, do it because there are some wordings of um uh, uh, I, I'll just tell you what the wording is. To make any provisions with respect to the acquisition and termination of citizenship and all mm -hmm. other matters relating to citizenship. This is the underlying word. You know, make any provision with respect uh, to the acquisition, termination of citizenship and all other. But then, mm -hmm. you know, uh, that has been countered uh, by uh, saying that, you know, Article 13, uh, mm -hmm. You know, clarifies that any law passed by Parliament must comply with the fundamental rights of Chapter Four. Right. Yeah, so yeah. you know, it's not that you know that particular Article Eleven can override Article Thirty. So yeah. uh, that uh, uh, is not because many have argued that you know Article Eleven you know cannot mm -hmm. be questioned, mm -hmm. uh, but you know Article Thirteen uh, is there. And and also have one more question. Like this amendment, it uh, uh, nullifies or it cancels all the existing cases that are on there on these people uh, for the illegal immigration. Now, can a uh, enactment, or can a legislature by the government can uh, decriminalize something in retrospective effect? See, usually when we see IPC and all, it is like it is always the prospective effect, the criminal laws. And now here it is going retrospective. So is that uh, no? You know, at least in the criminal area, you can't have mm -hmm. retrospective uh, yes. uh, application. Yes. I mean, you know, for an act done when uh, mm -hmm. it was legal, how can you make it illegal? You know. Yes. So I think that is not going to stand. It is against uh, natural justice and common law. Yeah, uh, section three of CA. Uh, do you want me to share the screen? No, CA uh, I can post it. It has amended uh, section six A, and it has inserted section six B. Uh, section six B, clause three. On and from the date of commencement of Citizenship Amendment Act 2019, any proceeding pending against a person under this section in respect of illegal migration or citizenship shall stand abated on conferment of citizenship to him. Okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Right. Uh, did you get it? Do you want me to share the screen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's with me. It's with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's with me. So my question is around that. Like, how can the government pass a legislation and tell that 
from retrospective effect, all the cases against you will be gone. Like all the proceedings will be nullified. Yeah. How is that a constitutionally valid statement? And I I am not seeing anybody asking that one. Like, how can this be done? So I was very curious. Why did it go unnoticed amongst people? Okay. I think I will have to study this. I have not gone through that, you know, but I, I can okay. send it to uh, subsequently. Another thing I want to, uh, this act also, the amendment has a reference to uh, mm -hmm. national citizen uh, uh, yeah. registra, registry. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so, uh, what I want to tell you is that the um, uh, N uh, NRC was, NCR was uh, implemented in um, um, Assam. Mm -hmm. I think 2013, I don't know, somewhere. Uh, and it flopped. And there was so much problem. And then it went to the Supreme Court. Then the Supreme Court issued some di direction. The Supreme Court uh, under Mr. Rajan Gogoi um, mm -hmm. and, uh, made some executive order, which he is not supposed to do. He should have interpreted the law rather than you know give direction and how to maintain it. And ultimately, that became a fiasco. I don't know where it is standing. Now they mm -hmm. want after the CAA, they want to implement the national uh, register of citizen uh, citizens. Mm -hmm. Now that is going to create a havoc. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know where it is going to lead. You know, it has to be very carefully done, orchestrated, and the fears of the minorities have to be assuaged. That's Otherwise, we'll have a lot of problems. So. That if you have any questions, you can ask me other. Yeah, and uh, how is NRC going to impact the citizenship? Like this enactment or, or the provision? Why people are very scared that it is coming and it is also it is linked with CR, uh, CAA? Uh, because one is if you see the uh, uh, questions that are asked, you know, the, you know, you have to. You know, those who have got, you know, passports and other things, I don't think that should be a problem if they have a birth certificate mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. a school leaving certificate and other things. That should not be a problem. But there are mm -hmm. so many people who don't have records. True. I mean, True. you know, how do they justify? And especially mm -hmm. poorer classes, you know, I mean, those who are homeless, who are, you know, the tribals or, you know, those who are vagabonds. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, these migrant laborers, you know, who move from place to place, um, mm -hmm. uh, is going to be a terrible thing for them. You know, the amount of documents that you have to produce, and uh, leaving it. My greatest fear is leaving it to the junior most fellow to reject. Fellow. It. You know, the junior most officer mm -hmm. uh, to reject it. I mean, he. You don't know, you know, it's all a uh, thing. If you bribe him, he might include your name. Sure. You know, even if you don't have a, a proper documentation, he might, you know, include. How are you going to verify that? Correct. Um, you Correct. know, the things which we have to look at, you know, I mean, um, um, I really don't know, you know, and it won't happen because even the uh, 1921 census has not happened. Yeah. I know. And also, they have not told about the conversion. Like, what if a Muslim converts himself as a Hindu, Christian, or whatever religion it is, and apply for citizenship? Are there any special criteria for it and something like that? Even yeah. that is not specified. Uh, if you are so desperate, a Muslim can convert himself into a Hindu and say that I'm a Hindu now, you know. Uh, exactly. So, yeah. So, all those and things. Once he, citizenship, he can again go back to Muslim religion. Like his base religion, uh, is there something like that that governs it? Because in Muslims they are very strict. So once you convert into Muslim and you avail any benefits, for example, polygamy that is like happening everywhere. Uh, even cele major celebrities like Dharmendra also he got uh, converted to have that benefit of having two wives. Now they are very clear. So the moment you go out of this one, we you are losing that one. So now there is nothing like that in Hindus. So once he converts into Hinduism, he gets citizenship, and then he goes back to Muslim. How are they going to govern it? I mean, it's uh, these are all big ifs, you know. I mean, <laughs> it has to yeah. be sorted administratively. 
I mean, legally, yeah. it is difficult. I mean, it has to be done administratively. I think it is very, very, it's a complicated thing. I don't think it is very easy. Uh, yeah, it's not at all easy. Definitely, it's not easy. How are you going to track that one? Like, who is a converted person? Who is not a converted person? That's uh, difficult. Yeah. See, the other thing also, uh, they say that, you know, the prosecution of, you know, uh, the Hindus or the Sikhs or uh, mm -hmm. you know, the Pasti. How do you prove prosecution? Exactly. It, usual. it can't be as a group. I mean, True. every person he says that, you know, we have come as a group. It is not, you can't have it as a group. You must mm -hmm. have to have it individual. You have to assess where will you get the data? Where will you, how is he going to prove? You yes. know, all that thing is there. You can't collectively say that, you know, this group is, you know, um, 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 uh, what do you call prosecuted? It has to True. be individual. I have to prove individually. You see, when you seek asylum, if you go uh, to mm -hmm. Europe and seek asylum, mm -hmm. it is not mm -hmm. decided. You know, there's so many Syrians have gone, or you know, yeah. Iraqis have gone to Europe. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it is not given as a group. The asylum is not given as a group. You know, it is on an individual basis. You have to prove yourself. Here too, I think you know, if anybody is saying that I am being prosecuted, then mm -hmm. he individually how are you going to do it you have to call witnesses you have to i mean and this they are coming well, from uh, bangladesh and they are coming from afghanistan how do you go there and check up whether this guy has been prosecuted beyond yeah. his work uh, other than his own work that i have been you know prosecuted there is nothing Wait. that can be done. yeah now uh, the uh, curiosity all lies in the ground uh, the CA is constitutionally valid or not? Like, what are the loopholes? So, if you list on the loopholes, there are a lot. Yeah. Yeah. As I said, you know, reasonable uh, 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 classification, reasonable classification. classification. And it has to meet the test. You know, uh, the reasonable uh, uh, classification is very clearly laid out by the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. There is no ambiguity in that. One, it says it has to have an intelligible differentia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, has to mm -hmm. have, you know, uh, the case law is Saurabh Chaudhary versus the Union of India, and even the other cases in Madhu Limaya versus uh, mm -hmm. Superintendent Tihar J. Mm -hmm. uh, second, it has to have a rational nexus. Mm -hmm. It has to have a rational nexus. The third is a legitimate purpose. Yeah. I mean, um, just because I have a change of heart, you know, saying that these people are, you know, what is the purpose you know other than and it has to be so, fair it has to yeah. be fair and non-arbitrary hmm. what grounds hmm. are you saying that muslims are not allowed not allowed that, that's ground? very very, very fair not, question it is uh, it is very arbitrary how do you exclude them you know? true how do you exclude them then and uh, no, this will promote uh, that conversion thing. You get converted and you get benefits. I beg your pardon? Uh, you get converted and you get benefits. So that is yeah. promoting a kind of uh, a conversion legislatively. Huh. And uh, avoiding class legislation, uh, mm -hmm. which is, you know, classification. While reasonable classification is permitted, you know, uh, mm -hmm. it, uh, uh, the doctrine prohibits class legislation that arbitrarily selects large group of people or persons without mm -hmm. reasonable justification for differential treatment. Treatment. So this is a very good ground, you know, reasonable classification is a very mm -hmm. reasonable ground for the inclusion of Muslims also, mm -hmm. uh, you know, into this. See, um, uh, it's a very dicey thing. Article 15 uh, says that you cannot discriminate uh, against, uh, it is for citizens, you know, it is mm -hmm. not for, on the basis of religion, race, caste, sex, or place mm -hmm. of birth, etc. Mm -hmm. But the only word is citizen, you know, so they are not yet citizens. Citizens. Uh, so, you know, it's a bit dicey. So I don't know whether it will stand uh, anything. Now, the other question is also, as you said, 31st December 2014. What yeah, if the okay. uh, or the discrimination continues beyond that or it is now happening? Uh, 
uh, it know. is even happening right now, right? Like, like now there is no significant changes that has happened in Bangladesh or Afghanistan or in Pakistan. That yeah. there is like the situation actually has worsened over there. Like the Taliban yeah. have taken over Afghanistan and the Pakistan. The GDP is running down very low. So the situation is way more uh, critical. Yeah, it just you know we have the. Uh, Uyghurs, you know, were the Chinese Muslims mm -hmm. in Xinjiang mm -hmm. and uh, Western uh, parts of uh, China. They are Muslims. Okay. Mm -hmm. There is an agitation going on. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, uh, the Chinese government has crushed that. So there is a movement, mm -hmm. you know, there is a liberation army or something like that. Mm -hmm. But the Uyghurs, they can also be included. As you know, if they want to come to India, but they are yeah. Muslims. The the, the 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 people have not uh, considered that. So there I'm is a lot it. of uh, things you know. Or for example, in um, uh, Dagestan or um, um, in the Caucasus, where you know there are a lot of Muslims who are uh, uh, being discriminated against by the Russians. Mm. What about mm. that? So it's a whole lot of uh, questions you know which you can ask. Uh, so, uh, <clears throat> but it all depends upon how uh, uh, the lawyers or the advocates, the senior advocates, are able to impress uh, the Supreme Court. Uh, uh, see, there is another thing I want to uh, mm -hmm. uh, mention is uh, a good uh, decision by Justice S. Murlidhar, who mm -hmm. was then. Uh, judge at the Delhi High Court. Uh, in uh, Namgayal Dolkar was a Union of India. Nationality mm -hmm. has no legislative recognition in the Citizenship Act. Okay. Citizenship at the commencement of the Republic was woven into the narrative of national borders mm -hmm. and the affirmation of state sovereignty of territorial boundaries mm -hmm. of the nation. He was very clear. Nationality has no legislative recognition in the Citizenship Act. Hmm. So uh, what I'm saying is whether uh, you are from any place, you know, nation, it doesn't have any effect. True. Other thing is I... also if you um, uh, uh, we are signatories to the Refugee Convention of 1951 hmm. and hmm. the Protocol of 67. See, mm -hmm. under our constitution, Article 326, mm -hmm. our Article 326, and the mm -hmm. Representation of People's Act 1950, mm -hmm. voting rights are available to all citizens. Mm -hmm. Okay, voting rights are available. And if you are in the voters list, then you are a citizen. Citizen. So those people who are there in the uh, voters list, by this are deemed to be citizens of India. Yeah. How can you true. Anything? true, true. And they the government did not consider the citizenship as a factor while issuing the Aadhaar card. Like even in the Aadhaar card, we can find that this is not the proof of citizenship. And even non-citizens yeah. can apply for Aadhaar card. Even they could get their Aadhaar card. So it is like they have to show them that we, yes, we are here in India for 182 uh, plus days and you get the other card. See, similarly, the uh, NPR is also there, NCR, uh, huh? National Citizen Register, and NPR is also population register. There, anybody who enters India for, for more than six months and stays, then he has to be included in that. So hmm. all those things, are, I don't know how this is going to happen. It, it is all contradictory to each other. It has not been thought about. I, I can only tell you, you know, this thing has not been thought about. Uh, clearly, uh, it has been uh, made in a lot of haste. And with some purpose in mind, you know, we don't know. So I don't yeah, want to comment. And, and also, I think uh, it is very hard for the government to justify that though the bill was passed in 2019, they enforced it in 2024. Just last month. Yeah. So you have any more questions or anything like that? You know, you can ask. Uh, 
no sir like um, what what could be the uh, can the, does the government have the right to withhold the bills like that especially uh, these kind of bills yeah you know i mean that is a uh, that is a right with the government you know uh, a notification okay. by gazette okay it has to notify you know there are so many things in the indian constitution also still not notified you know the amendments mm. which have happened Happened. You know, there is something uh, to do with uh, Article 22 uh, mm -hmm. regarding uh, uh, detention. Okay. You know that has been um, uh, passed by the Lok Sabha, received the, the but is still not um, uh, notified. Uh, hmm. you know, if it is notified, it will be very good. You know, people can't be uh, people can't be uh, what do you call? Let me read out. Uh, for example. Yeah, you know, uh, Article 22, protection against arrest and detention in certain cases. Um, uh, the 44th Amendment 1978 clause, effective date not yet notified, which says okay. no law providing for preventive detention shall authorize the detention of a person for a longer period than three months, mm -hmm. uh, unless you know, they have given... Uh, this that has not been notified notified so uh you know things uh and uh, this is almost 1978 you know we are all mm -hmm. um, uh, you know 40 years or uh, 40 years behind uh, still not mm -hmm. notified it is possible that the government cannot notify notify oh, okay okay so uh, my question was regarding that Huh. Yes, sir. So that's all about CA. I think the session was very, very, uh, I could say, very like like a volcano of knowledge. It was so much of information here and there, along with backgrounds. So I understand how important it is to understand the background or understand the history to know about the current situation, that the present situation, and also to anticipate future, like what might happen. It was really great speaking to you, sir. Thank you so very much for uh, spending your time. And that was very clear how much effort and how much time you have put to prepare for this talk. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for all the time Perfect. and all the effort, sir. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. See you then. Okay. Bye. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye.